This video provides guidance for the safe washing and sterilization of laboratory glassware. It is intended to supplement the formal instruction provided in each institution and each laboratory. This video is not a substitute for a safety training program. In a scientific research laboratory, everyone who supports the scientists shares two responsibilities. To carry out his or her duties with great care and to work safely. You already know a lot about working safely in glassware washing. But we're going to review some highlights with help from Cliff Sonnenbrot. Good morning, Rodney. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Cliff? Very good, thank you. He knows how important it is to watch out for anything that could cause a slip, trip, or fall. A margin of safety is provided by a non-slip surface or floor mats. Cliff knows that he gets important protection by wearing a lab coat and closed-toed shoes with rubber soles and he's careful always to remember his safety glasses and rubber gloves. As a first step, Cliff sorts the glassware and sets aside any problem items. What should he do with a chipped or cracked bottle? Right, out it goes. Items that contain chemicals or contamination go straight back to the researcher who knows the hazard level and proper disposal. At Cliff's facility, all items are pre-soaked with EDTA sulfonate-based detergent to aid in cleaning and eliminate any need for acid cleaning. For scraping labels, he braces the bottle against the sink so he has good control. You can always tell a glassware washing facility that has good teamwork and caring people. Whenever there's a small problem, it's taken care of right away, so no one is exposed to danger. Cliff and his co-workers take responsibility. They watch out for their own safety and for the safety of each other. No washing machine can work well unless its filters and drains are clean. Cliff always checks before starting to load. A piece of glass in the drain sump could cause an inadequate wash or an overflow. Different facilities load trays for washing in different ways. This is how they do it here. Tubes and other small items are weighted down under a metal tray or basket. Large and bulky items go in the back. A last check to assure that the wash cycle is programmed correctly. When the wash is finished, Cliff allows some time to pass before opening the washer. Then he waits for the steam to clear before removing the hot items. He empties trapped water and makes sure all items are secure before sliding out the tray. Acid washing isn't used much anymore. Newer methods are so much safer. But if it's still practiced at your facility, you'll want to follow the safety steps that Rodney Chisholm is using. He keeps the acid bottle inside another container and protects himself with long-sleeved gloves, heavy-duty apron, and protection for the face. Even with all his protective clothing, 
Rodney works carefully to prevent any splashes. He also makes sure there is no bleach nearby, since bleach and the acid can form a dangerous gas. And he never forgets the buddy system, making arrangements with another worker to stay nearby the whole time. Meanwhile, Cliff is getting ready for autoclaving. He's careful to select only those items that can withstand the intense heat and pressure. When plastic melts inside the autoclave, well, you don't even want to know. Trays and all items need to be on a shelf, never directly on the bottom of the autoclave. Just as on the washing machine, he checks filters before loading. Cliff is careful to make sure the door of the autoclave is fully closed. Of course, he is thoroughly familiar with the manufacturer's operating instructions. If you had to list what to be careful about in glassware washing, you might put steam and heat at the very top. Cliff protects himself by first cracking the door and wearing heat-resistant gloves. The autoclave door is probably the hottest spot in the whole facility. Cliff waits a full five minutes if the autoclave load contains bottles, and no less than ten minutes when he's autoclaving liquids. and then he lets the item stand for about another 15 minutes. Before loading containers of liquids into the autoclave, the tops must be loosened to avoid having the bottle shatter. Cliff uses a tray to catch any spill and adds a quarter to a half inch of water so the bottles will heat more evenly. After autoclaving, Cliff wears a rubber apron when removing liquids. As you know, any bottle still bubbling could explode easily if touched. At Clip's facility, the rule is, let them stand in an out-of-the-way spot a full hour before handling. We'll close with a comment about the drying ovens. People who forget themselves and put plastic into a drying oven that's set to the temperature for glassware can cause havoc. So make sure you use separate ovens or check the temperature carefully. The researchers themselves know the job you do in glassware washing makes a difference. Well, in terms of good science, it's very important because there have been instances in my experience where experiments don't work because glassware wasn't washed properly. If you carry through a, a solvent or an agent or a chemical from one experiment to the next, your expectations might be a little high if you think that, uh, that it's going to work. You're a good team member in the research lab when you deliver clean glassware and work safely. Doing both of those well is what makes glassware washing a demanding and rewarding job.